continue to clap for the Lord, please. Amen. Now, I know I said, well, wonder you're not going to church. I said, but Lord, I don't know no other way to come except for how you tell me to come. First of all, I want to say thank you, uh, Minister Connolly, for inviting me. Thank you for allowing me to be among so many beautiful women. Um, as uh, my friend said, I am a member of Covenant House Word of Faith Ministries, but my pastor is Johnny uh, L. Reed, and my first lady is Tiffany Reed. I won't be before you all long, but I'm going to come a little bit in a little bit different direction because it was sort of kind of prepared for the 10 and up, but you know, it'll fit all of us. So with that being said, I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, oh, before I move on, I do want to give honor to my husband and his absence on tonight, Mr. Mayor, uh, whom I love dearly. Uh, y'all can clap for him, man. man. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, I just want to, and I just want to say you really touched me, and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, Lord, uh, she could just go all night, but it's beautiful how the Lord confirmed things, because a lot of the things that you said, I'm about to say them again, because that's how you get it. So just opening up, I am, and I'm not ashamed to say it, I'm 39 years old now, um, I've been through a lot. For my age and i thank god for all that he has done did not know what he was doing what he why he was doing it didn't appreciate it at all but now that i can look back i said thank you how many y'all feel like that you just said thank you Lord. as a child i didn't know what was in me but uh my aunt martha who i love so much she's a elder as well um she stood right by my side as a child about five years old i'm just gonna get a I'm gonna try to stay as clean, but I want you to understand that things go on with children at a very early age. Yeah. And what's put in them will come out of them. So as a child, um, I was unfortunate enough to have an uncle that was dear to me, molest me. Now some people say molest, they touched you, or they, no, I'm talking severely. I'm gonna say the whole nine, y'all, we have babies in here, so I'm not gonna, y'all just go with me. The whole nine yards for over a period of time. And you talking about going into a dark place and not wanting to come out. Uh, thinking about suicide. Thinking about not wanting to be here. And then knowing the Lord and asking him, why me? Why did you let this happen to me? And you're talking about a low self-esteem, but could be the loudest woman in the room. Or to walk into the room and have the biggest smile, but yet be so dark on the inside and feel so low. That's what, you, that's what I'm talking about. But I had my auntie. My mom was there too, not to take her out. He always put somebody there to help pull you through. I remember the night I had to go tell my mom what was going on with me because I couldn't take it anymore. And um, mm, it was it was something, y'all. It was something. Now I wish I was making this up to make y'all feel a certain type of way, uh, but I'm not. And you never know what somebody's going through. So in my earlier years coming up through school. I had some mean teachers. I had some that would say stuff about me. I had some great teachers too now. But I'm saying this for a reason. Being an educator as well, you never know what a child is going through. So you cannot judge the book by its cover. You never know what is going on in them. Nobody knew what was going on with me. All they knew that she's bad. All she do is talk loud. Yeah, I was bad. I was acting out. I wanted some attention. I wanted him to stop. But I couldn't tell nobody. So as we move forward and, and we have our young babies in here and even some grown women still can't talk about what happened to them way back when and they're living in the dark. It's time for us to become aware of who we truly are. And I thank God for my Aunt Martha who at a very early age when it all came out into the opening, she introduced me to this man named Jesus. And she told me, baby, no matter what you go through, if you ever get in a dark place like that again, you call on him because, see, the dog can't stay with the light. You call on him, and you call on him like you crazy. And I remember that from a little girl up until now, even when I went through other things, that man named Jesus would never, ever, ever, ever leave you. So they said, well, you're too young to know about Jesus. No, you're not. And I'm saying to the parents and to all the babies in here, you don't have a relationship. You don't know what you're going to be doing. You don't have a past. You don't have a future if you don't have Jesus. So we got to start putting it back in there. Now, I hate that they took it out of school. Now, I'm just going to say, if they would have caught me in my office, I probably would have got fired. Because I was a praying, landing hands, laying down, holy ghost, testifying principal when I was in the school house. And I didn't mind praying with you. When the baby came in there, I laid my hands on my baby, and I prayed over that baby. If she came in there with something else, I would pray. 
pray over that child. And it was so many that came through there who had gotten molested. And I had to share my story. See, I didn't know why he took me through. But when they looked at this beautiful woman sitting there just smiling, they said, for real, Dr. Mary, it happened to you. I said, yes, it did, baby. But you can make it through. And so they saw somebody had went through something, had gone through something, was not afraid to tell it. And then they believed that they can move forward. This is a true story, y'all. I didn't understand why God was doing all that he was doing. But I knew it was for a purpose. So with that being said to my young ladies and to my grown women who are still sitting back there, it's three key points I want to introduce or to leave with you on tonight. Moving forward, I already said the overall one is you got to know Jesus. Amen. You got to know Jesus. You got to know God. You got to believe that God gave his son. Even if you're three years old, if you can say mama and daddy, I need you to say Jesus. Amen. I need you to say God. I need you to say feel me, Jesus. I'm talking about those should be the first words if you really want to know. Because he's the one that's going to keep it. And so that's what we need to go back to. Putting it in our babies. Teachers, I'm telling you, if they ain't looking, just rub your hands on them. I used to walk down the hall and just touch the walls. I put oil on my hands, just touch them. Now they said, why are you going into the school? Because that's where our babies are. And that's where a lot of them do not get what they need. So for the ones that are filled, and sanctified, you gotta walk through sometimes. You don't know what you're doing. You're just home sometimes. They don't know what you're saying. And you pray over these children because they are our future. So the three points I want to leave you with, I had to learn how to believe, not just in myself, but to believe in God first at an early age. And it worked. The nights I want to have nightmares, the night the voices came to me, the nights they told me I wasn't going to make it, I wasn't going to be nobody, that you ain't a part of the family, you wrong for telling on your uncle. Jesus, I said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And I promise you that thing had to flee. I promise you it had to flee. So you got to believe that God is who he is, because he's for real about it. And then you got to believe in yourself. Now, I'm not talking to the adults. I'm talking to my baby. Y'all know what synonyms and anonyms are, right? Synonyms means the same, right? Anonyms means the opposite, right? So I'm just giving you a little definition very, very quickly. Believe means to accept something that is true and feel the truth of it. You got to believe in yourself. You got to believe that God is who he is. You got to believe that he called you to be a purpose. If you breathe it, if you got up this morning and you're walking through this land, he has a purpose for your life. You got to believe that. Now, some of the synonyms are meaning the same. You got to think and imagine, assume and presume it, and understand Amen. that it is what it is. And I said, Lord, there's only one word. I Googled and Googled and Googled. I said, I only found one word for the opposite of believe, and that's doubt. Now, sister, you said it better than anybody. We think that the people are always on us, and they are sometimes, but it's our own mind. It's our own mind that causes us to doubt what God has really put in us. We get up and we toil with ourselves. And that's why it's so important what you say. You have to ask God for a renewed mind and a renewed spirit every single day of your life. It doesn't go away until Christ Jesus comes back. That is the truth. It's your mind. It's, it's your mind. And you got to get your mind right. You have to believe. The, and then the scripture that goes with that is. <laughs> and y'all know it. Come on. Philippians 4 13. I can do who? who does what? All of them. Every last one of them. It didn't say some. It didn't say, I'm almost done. It didn't say some. The next one is, and I love this so much. I said, God, proceed. I said, Yeah, that's all right. You got to believe. When you believe in yourself, you can proceed. Means to go forward, not to stop. To keep going. To finish a course of action. But well, why I got to proceed? Because if you stop, you ain't moving. If you ain't moving, you ain't living. If you ain't living, you existing. And you're just here. Life is made to be lived. You got to proceed with what God has called you to do. But which way do I go? You have to ask for direction. You have to believe that you can do all the things that everybody tell you that you can't do. And the scripture that God gave me for this one is 1 John 4 and 4. He said, ye are God, ye of God, little children, have overcome them because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Now, I have to be honest. As a grown woman, I just, you know, a couple years, way you know, before I became all the way saved, I'm like, what they mean? Right? It's he that is in me, and he that is in the world. What does that mean? And when I finally read to God, sure, I kept reading. I said, oh my God, greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. So you got to let the Holy Spirit dwell in you and move in you. And I'm going to y'all say, that lady excited. Yes, I am. Because God has done a thing, and I'm still standing here today. So if I'm going to look too loud for you, forgive me, but not. Because I'm excited about what he has done for me. I'm excited about looking around this room knowing that we all have testimony.
testimony. Some of us have the strength to tell it, and some of us don't. But after tonight, we hope you're going to let that thing go.